this is something that Albertans are going to have to push to make sure that we actually do have an agenda, um, a, a referendum, and uh, we are going to be the ones responsible for educating people to make informed decisions. And I think right now there's a lot of distrust of the government, which is obviously an obstacle that we have to overcome. Um, and Justin Trudeau helps every which way he can uh, to make that uh, more obvious to Albertans that obviously the government at home here, if you trust it or don't trust uh, Danielle Smith and the UCP, is somewhat irrelevant. I think it's an obvious fact that we cannot rely on the federal government and a centralized government in Ottawa to act in our best interest. So much easier to influence a government here at home. And then the other big obstacle I'm seeing is this false sense of security, uh, where people just don't have the correct data and the correct information around the Canada Pension Plan. And so, again, if we want to make this happen, then it's we, the people, it's Albertans that are going to have to make sure that it does happen. Well, and that's uh, part of what's up. Like one of the the, the quick um, things that happened when the discussion came up was suddenly the Canada pension plan was trumpeted by defenders as being one of the best pension plans on earth. And we'd be insane to leave that plan. And, and why would we dare leave such a plan? But when you look at it, working an entire lifetime and contributing into it and right now, the average payout is less than $800 a month. I'm sorry, but that doesn't sound like a heck of a good plan to me. Yeah, well, the average uh, individual who benefits from the Canada Pension Plan receives on average $758, and that's after 40 years of contributing. Um, if you take a look at what that individual, had they contributed that money on their own, and then the flexibility, let's say, in their own retirement savings plan, uh, would have given them a lot more money with a lot more flexibility, money that they could have then left to their spouse or to their, their children, um, should they, you know, die before having received the pension plan or afterwards. So the Canada Pension Plan, um, according to the Mercer Report, which is a CFA, Chartered Financial Analyst Report, only ranks 12, which is not bad, but it's not the best. Um, even when you look at the returns, I mean, the returns are not reflective of what people receive. So and, and here's two numbers that I'd really like to leave with people if we do nothing else today is that one, there's $1.14 trillion of unfunded liabilities with the Canada Pension Plan. Nobody talks about that. It was hidden in the uh, Chief Actuary Report at the very, very end under acknowledgments. Well, I think that deserves a little bit more of attention than just an acknowledgement. And then the other fact that I really want to bring to people's attention is that come 2026, so just two years away, the Chief Actuary reports on this as well, that the expenditures for the Canada Pension Plan will exceed the benefits or, or the contributions. So not only do we have 1.14 trillion already, which has grown from 884 in 2019, and it's continuing to grow, it is actually going to just exponentially explode when the actual expenditures for the first time exceed the contributions that are coming in. Because what people don't realize is the Canada Pension Plan, the base, is a pay-as-you-go. So it's the people that are contributing today that are paying for the retirees. The retirees that think it's my money, your money was spent long ago. <laughs> it is the people who are working today that are giving you your pension. You can become a Western Standard member for just $10 a month or $99 a year for unlimited access.